Hello and welcome everybody. It's the Minute Admin here and I have somebody that you probably already recognize from YouTube or LinkedIn. Bradley Rice here with the Talent Stacker program. If you don't know already, Bradley Rice here is the Salesforce guru. So if you're looking to get started in Salesforce or really, you know, get a Salesforce job within six months, this is your guy. Uh, and I wanted to bring Brad onto the podcast here to really just talk about how to break into the Salesforce ecosystem and how to not only break in, but get a Salesforce shop, especially if you're a newbie or you've been trying for a long time and it hasn't worked for you. So with that being said, I'm going to let Brad introduce himself here. So welcome to the show, Brad. Yeah, I really appreciate it. I'll, I'll try to live up to that introduction and uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay, well, uh, I've got a couple of questions here for you. And hopefully this not only helps the people watching this, but if you're watching this and you know somebody who wants to break into Salesforce, show this to them as well, uh, because this could change lives and it is changing lives. And we'll kind of talk about that as we go forward and uh, as you follow Brad and see the lives that he's touching. So Brad, just want to start off with a, a basic question here. So what are some common myths about getting started uh, in Salesforce or about a Salesforce career in general? Yeah, the, there's a few different things that that I think are common myths. And, and, and I don't think it's that anyone is like creating a video or writing a blog article or speaking in an event and they're trying to mislead people. I think that we're all sharing information based on our experience and we end up sharing information that's more isolated or it sounds nice, but it's not actually true. Uh, so we end up sharing information just based on something that sounds cool and not something that's actually based on evidence. So uh, a few of those are things like in order to land an entry level Salesforce job, you need three, four, five certifications. Um, it's just not true. You need you need one certification. We've seen people land jobs with no certifications. Now, I'm not going to recommend that. Like, I think you do need to show that you're serious about this career path. But one certification does that. If you want to work on a second certification, that's completely up to you. But I would just say be thoughtful about how you spend your time preparing because there are things you can do to prepare like interview prep, personal branding, networking, things like this, where you might be putting all of your energy into a second, third, fourth, fifth certification. And really that's not the most efficient route forward. So I would say, you know, one of the big myths that I think stops a lot of people from going this route is that they hear you need a lot of certifications to get started and then they get one and they're like, man, that was tough. And so they give up because they don't feel like getting three or four. Um, so that's the one thing I would say. The other thing I would say is that uh, there's this sort of misunderstanding that there, there are only developer jobs in the Salesforce ecosystem. Um, but most people who are inside the ecosystem know that's not true. Uh, actually, most of the jobs are non-coding jobs. Now, a lot of times people say, hey, you're either a developer or an admin, but that's not true at all. You have, we can start with developers and admins, but you have business analysts, you have project managers, uh, you have what are called engagement managers, you have specialists uh, like CPQ, Field Service Lightning, Marketing Cloud, like yourself. Um, there are so many different avenues you can go within the Salesforce ecosystem, not to mention consulting and solution architects and technical architects. There are all these different job roles. And I can tell you that the majority of the job roles I just mentioned do not involve coding at all. So um, throw that out. You don't have to be a developer. Now, if, you, if you're interested in writing code and you think you want to be a developer, more power to you. That's that's an amazing thing. And I'm sure you'll make a great developer, but you don't have to be. So don't feel like you have to write code to be a Salesforce professional. Um, I think those are two of the, you know, really big ones. Um, I would say if I was going to layer on a third, I know we probably have more things to talk about. Um, it would be that you don't need a college degree and that the skills, uh, I'll, I'll put it this way, you have transferable skills. I don't care if you're currently a high school student or you work at a mall folding shirts and putting them on a shelf, or if you have some sort of other tech background or you're a school teacher or whatever else, I promise you, you have transferable skills. It's all about understanding your value and being able to talk to those skills. Yeah. 
No, I completely agree. I think, uh, and I've seen this time and time again, um, one certification, I just kind of want to recap what you said. So one certification, I know somebody right now who landed a six figure marketing cloud job with one certification. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, completely like hits home for me. Um, it's not me, but it is somebody that I know very, uh, very well. And, um, you're completely right on that. So um, just want to uh, go to the next part here, which is now that you understand those some of those common myths and you, you've got those debunked, um, how do you streamline your learning process? How do you streamline learning faster with all the stuff on the internet, everything bombarding you? What, what do you do to learn this in the most efficient way? Yeah. So the nice thing about this is that if you don't already know this, you should. So Trailhead is the name of Salesforce's 100% free training platform. Um, now, some people would go, Brad, it's not 100% free. And I would argue that, yes, it is. Um, now, you do have to pay for a certification exam if you want to pay to uh, go actually sit for the certification exam. Um, in those range, it's $200. But typically, there are coupon codes you can find in community groups on you know, Facebook, Slack, LinkedIn, um, and those range from 40 to $100 uh, discounted. So typically the true price of a certification is gonna be somewhere between 100 and $160 uh, if you find some of those codes, which are pretty easy to get. Now, that's, that's the nice thing. So all the training is gonna be completely free. The certification is gonna cost you somewhere between 100 and $200. And that's all you're gonna pay for that first certification. Now you need to prepare for that though. And you can pretty much just go Google uh, the name of the certification you want to get and then study guide. So I recommend starting with the administrator certification, no matter what direction you're going. If you're going to be a developer, an analyst, an admin, start with the admin certification. It's going to lay the foundation for your Salesforce knowledge. Now, the trail for that is called preparing for your admin certification. Um, so you would go through that trail. And if you wanted to use any sort of ancillary study materials, uh, my number one go-to is Focus on Force. It's $19 for uh, the practice exams. And I would recommend grabbing those. Uh, it just helps you get a feel for what the exams are going to be like. And it breaks down sort of if you miss a question, you can review and it gives you documentation on where you can go to re- uh, sort of rehash that information and better understand it. So from a certification perspective, I would do trailhead and focus on force. If you feel like you need more than that, there are other options out there. But for most people, those two uh, resources pretty much get the job done for most certifications. Having a certification is not everything. You're not just going to hop on focus on force, hop on trailhead, get a certification, go put in a job application and have people handing you offers left and right. That's not how this works. There's more that goes into it. And that's why you hear some of this, you know, the, these myths like you need five certifications because people don't understand what else goes into getting the job. So they just think, well, I got one certification. Maybe I need two. Maybe I need three. Maybe I need four. And they just keep going down the certification treadmill. And what you need to do is think strategically about how you could maybe go forward without certifications. Maybe that's not what's holding you back. And what you'll tend to find is you need to get on LinkedIn and you need to build your personal brand. And we'll talk about the five day challenge in a little bit. And I break down in the five day challenge. Some people say like, I don't want to do a LinkedIn profile. My employer might see that I'm making changes or uh, what happens if, you know, I don't like using social media and things like that. We break all that down for you. We give you some options to help you through that. Um, but that should not stop you from getting on LinkedIn. Uh, what LinkedIn is going to allow you to do is build your personal brand. And what that means is uh, it's like a living, breathing resume. It's always changing. You're engaging, you're active, you're networking, and you can do that. And whether you're an introvert or an extrovert, I promise you there is a variety of networking that's going to feel comfortable for you and you can jump in there. And it's a very accepting community. So LinkedIn, you need to be in there networking. Um, you would be surprised how many people land jobs because they worked with someone on LinkedIn, even just commented on a post and that person private messaged them and said, hey, we've got a job opening. I'd love to interview you and they get the job. So what you see in job postings is not every job that's available. It's what we refer to as the hidden job market. 
And that's when you're networking and you're landing jobs that were never posted. So that's a lot of what you can do. Now, you need to prepare for interviews. Most people don't because they don't know what to do. They read the top 10 interview questions. They practice those. They show up for interviews. They sound like a robot because they rehearse the questions and they don't know what to say when they don't get the questions they prepared for. And it doesn't look good. Nobody wants to talk to a robot. They want to hire a person because they're going to have to work with you. Um, so interview prep is really important um, and getting hands on experience, whether that's through a volunteer project or uh, what I call a personal project. You're in your um, what's called a playground and you're just sort of working through maybe creating your own business or you might do like a budgeting app or an exercise tracking app or something like that. Um, and these are great ways to polish your skills and give you something to talk about in those interviews. So it's it's really it's got to be a comprehensive preparation. You can't just get four or five certifications and expect to walk through and get job offers. Yeah. And uh, that actually leads perfectly into what you mentioned, something about the five day challenge. So uh, if you don't know already, everybody, Brad has a great Salesforce five day challenge. Um, so, Brad, could you tell us a little bit more about what the Salesforce five day challenge is? what people should expect when they sign up for the Salesforce five day challenge, what they're going to get out of it and you know what they're going to learn on the other side. Yeah. So first of all, if you're taking notes um, in the video description down below, uh, you'll want to head over to talentstacker.com forward slash Salesforce uh, to get started. But we'll have a link below. You don't need to remember that. Just click the link and you'll be good to go. Uh, what that's going to do is it's five days and you're expecting to put in about 30 minutes a day. Now, you don't have to do these five days in a row. You could sign up today and start next week. It's totally up to you. But I would go ahead and get in there. And what we're going to do is we're going to send you five emails, one each day. And it's going to start with showing you exactly how to set up your Trailhead account. That's that 100% free training platform we talked about. It's then going to show you exactly what to do to navigate Trailhead, how to understand it and to get you started on your first certification. We'll show you exactly what to do so you don't have to, you know, read different blogs or watch different videos or, or hear the noise of what you should do first. Um, we're gonna walk you through it step by step. We give you tasks, we break down exactly what you should do and, and make sure that you have success there. Now on day three, we're gonna walk you through how to set up your LinkedIn account and how to get started posting with some ideas about how to engage and start sort of breaking the ice for yourself getting involved in LinkedIn. Day four, we're gonna show you exactly how to get real world experience before you ever land your first job. Most people say, "How you know, nobody wants to give me a job because I don't have experience, but I can't get experience if nobody gives me a job. We're gonna show you how to get beyond that obstacle. And then day five, we're actually gonna go through uh, the top five reasons that people do not land Salesforce jobs, why they, uh, they fall short because they don't do the right thing. So we're going to tell you the five keys to landing Salesforce jobs so that you can be prepared for the entire process. And it's not that you're going to learn it all in these five days, but you're going to understand what it takes to land your first Salesforce job so you can mentally prepare for the steps ahead of you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's funny. I usually ask people um, that I do podcasts with or that I interview with like this, um, what are your tips and resources? But you have the ultimate tips, the ultimate resources list all compiled into this one Salesforce five day challenge. So everybody listening, literally there is no other uh, tip or trick or link that I could ask Brad for that is going to be um, on the level of this free Salesforce five day challenge. Remember, it's absolutely free. You just put in your email. Um, learn exactly what Brad said over the over the next five days. You can start anytime. Um, so that is really the last question that I would ask. And you just covered that in the great detail. With that being said, uh, thank you for answering some common questions that I know a lot of people have, dispelling some of those myths and uh, helping you know whoever's watching this to get streamlined and started as efficiently as possible in the Salesforce ecosystem especially with your free five day Salesforce challenge. So with that being said, thank you so much for joining uh, today here, Brad. Um, I will take any questions for anybody who has any questions in the comment section below. So if you do have any of those questions, make sure to leave questions in the comment section. I will also be linking Brad's LinkedIn here 
as well as mine. So if you have questions, just feel free to reach out to either one of us. Thanks, Brad. Awesome. Thanks for having me.